Throughout history, Russia has enjoyed a leadership of generals who graduated from some of the world's top military academies. Fortunately for Ukraine, the only school Russia's current military leaders graduated from was Clown College. This is the dumbest reason why Russia is slowly losing the war for Ukraine. Russia is by far the superior military power to Ukraine. In terms of numbers of troops and equipment, it's amongst the top three, if not necessarily quality. Even with poorly maintained equipment, bad doctrine, and poorly motivated troops, though, it takes an extraordinarily dumb reason for Russia to be losing this war. OPSEC is a term anyone who has served in the US or a closely aligned military has had drilled into their heads for the entire term of their enlistment. Operational security is the concept of maintaining security of ongoing operations so as to deny the enemy information which could be exploited for military or political use. Back when war was a relatively crude affair, it was easy to maintain good OPSEC. As technology has evolved though, so too have militaries had to evolve to keep the prying eyes of their enemy away. Modern OPSEC is a complicated affair which troops at every level are responsible for, and Russia has failed completely in this regard, possibly to the point of costing them the war. Before the war started, the entire world was drinking the Russian Kool-Aid, believing it to be a modern and very capable power. While this was a critical intelligence failure, it was due in large part because of a wonderful bit of maskirova by the Russian government, who conducted regular highly choreographed exercises with hand-picked troops to prove it was capable of modern combined arms operations. Contrary to what we were previously led to believe, Russia is not capable of any of the things it used to display. Strategic bombers are some of the most important assets in any military's arsenal, which is why you want to make sure that your communications with these expensive and often nuclear-capable tools are well encrypted. So imagine the West's surprise when Russian strategic bombers crossed into Ukrainian airspace and started broadcasting communications via unsecured frequencies, giving Ukraine great insight into their targets and procedures. But it wasn't just Russia's most important air assets who were clear-casting their full intentions. Russia's ground units got in on the fun, too. U.S. intelligence-gathering platforms, such as its fleet of rivet joint aircraft, were fully prepared for the task of breaking Russian encryption. So imagine their surprise when Russian units started broadcasting status reports, attack plans, and troop movements via the equivalent of civilian walkie-talkies. Ukrainian civilians immediately took to the airwaves and started trolling Russian units in real time broadcasting confusing reports, engaging in radio flame wars, or just filling the airwaves with the Ukrainian national anthem or even the theme song for Barney the Dinosaur so that Russian units couldn't understand anything broadcasted on them. Russian generals and senior officers were also frequently using unsecured communications early in the war. The United States, which spent 20 years sniffing out the electronic emissions of high-value insurgent and terrorist VIPs, was quick to locate these unsecured calls and pass along targeting data to Ukrainian forces. One Excalibur-guided artillery shell later, and Russia had one less senior officer, a trend that only increased with the introduction of HIMARS with its longer reach. At least this gross violation of OPSEC wasn't entirely the fault of poor Russian military doctrine. Rather, the problem that Russia quickly ran into was that during peacetime, Comrade Colonel Koruptovich had sold all the unit's fancy radio equipment for a tidy profit. That left Private Konskriptovich scouring occupied Ukrainian towns and cities for any piece of radio equipment they could find, which was naturally not encrypted to military standards or at all. As a closely related side note, Russia also immediately ran into a problem coordinating its forces due to a lack of communication. This time, though, it wasn't a lack of equipment. In fact, Russia's FSB agents sent to coordinate military action directly with the highest levels of government were carrying some of the most advanced encrypted pieces of comm gear on the planet. Years earlier, when the Russians realized that the US had cracked their encryption, they spent millions of dollars building a new, highly secured system that could ensure communication with the Kremlin from anywhere on the planet. Well, anywhere on the planet that had cell reception because Russia's fancy gear immediately failed when entering Ukraine, because Comrade General Clown Shoes had ordered airstrikes against Ukraine's cellular communication towers. This was meant to make it impossible for Ukrainian partisan forces to coordinate, and it probably worked. Unfortunately, the FSB was then forced to use regular phones to send reports back to the Kremlin, which the US greedily scooped up with its vast intelligence apparatus. These reports helped Ukraine's defenders be exactly where they were needed the most, or could do the most damage. Russia's biggest problem is that it's one of the world's best militaries for killing civilians or attacking lightly armed rebel forces in Syria. When Russian Federation troops entered Ukraine, their leadership was completely unprepared to fight a modern electronic war, 
which is ironic given the emphasis put by Russia on electronic warfare as a way to counter NATO capabilities. In fact, Russian EW capabilities are formidable, and in recent years they fielded some very powerful battlefield EW platforms, which would make NATO coordination difficult. That's why it was really nice of their troops to retreat and leave one of those vehicles completely intact for Ukrainian forces to capture and immediately send to the US for analysis. On the offense, though, Russia honestly has some significant capabilities to operate in the electromagnetic spectrum. But on the defense, well, Russia has had to learn extremely painful lessons. It's bad enough when your forces are broadcasting their plans via civilian radios, but Russian troops were apparently completely unprepared for the speed at which Western nations could sniff out electronic emissions, pass word along to Ukraine, and then put steel on target. When Chechnya sent troops to Ukraine, they came with a fearsome reputation. And to their credit, there truly are no more fearsome TikTok warriors than the Chechens. These guys used to upload a dozen videos a day showing off their equipment, boasting of their battlefield prowess, and commenting on the cowardice of Ukrainian defenders. They upload much fewer videos now, mostly because a lot of them are dead. However, one Chechen commander just couldn't wait to get back to the rear area before uploading his latest TikTok, and after completing a military operation, whipped out his phone to brag about the great defeat his forces had just delivered to the Ukrainians. Apparently, nobody told the Ukrainians they had been defeated, because halfway through his live stream, they raised a polite objection to his comments in the form of a 105mm precision-guided artillery shell. By live streaming, this soldier was effectively giving precise targeting coordinates to within a meter or two to the Ukrainian artillery, and they were more than happy to respond. The incident was captured on live stream to the shock of his audience. The Chechens aren't the only invading forces who are finding their love of social media is getting them killed, though. Early in the war, as the Russians advanced on Kyiv, many Russian soldiers began making cell phone calls or uploading social media posts while on the move. This not only allowed Ukraine to track Russian forces in real time, but in more than one instance, it helped home in missile and precision artillery fire on Russian positions. According to Ukraine's intelligence chief, these cell calls and social media posts helped a lot when they were targeting Russian forces. It's not just Russian forces shooting themselves in the foot, though. Russian journalists have been happy to do their part to help Ukraine win as well. Famously, Russian reporter Alexander Kotz did a live piece on a brand new mortar carrier being fielded by the Russian military. This allowed Ukrainian forces to discern its exact location and then later lure it out of hiding only to destroy it with a precision attack. Kotz would go on to deny that his report was to blame, but it seems a strange coincidence how immediately after his reporting, the Ukrainians were able to locate this fancy new piece of gear and give it a very early retirement. Russian war reporter Sergei Sreda, though, saw what Kotz had done and said, hold my beer. On tour of the occupied areas of Ukraine, Sreda was invited to the local headquarters of the infamous Wagner private military company in Popasna. Better suited to killing civilians in Syria than fighting a real war, Wagner was a good host for the Kremlin propagandists, though, who eagerly snapped a photo of himself shaking hands with one of their leaders. While he was at it, he made sure to get a cool new pic for his Tinder profile alongside of some of Wagner's best and brightest. Unfortunately, nobody involved bothered to think about the fact that the photo included the exact address of the building housing Wagner's HQ. Perhaps unsurprisingly, immediately upon uploading, Wagner received a new visitor. This time, though, it was Uncle Heimars. The building was completely destroyed along with an undetermined number of Wagner mercenaries who honestly probably saved themselves a lot of effort dying behind the front lines rather than directly upon arriving at the front lines as is historically the case. Russian tourists have gotten in on the effort to help Russia defeat itself, and back in August, one Russian tourist was of great service to Ukraine's defenders. On holiday in the occupied Crimean Peninsula, this unnamed tourist snapped a cool photo of himself near some military vehicles. Thoughtlessly uploading the photo online, Ukraine was able to identify the vehicle in the background as an S-400 launcher, and using the photo's metadata, get an exact location on the air defense unit's location. While not immediately destroyed, being able to map out Russian air defenses would later give it the ability to target them thanks to American high-speed anti-radiation missiles. Russia has proven it is stubbornly resistant to learning from its mistakes, much to Ukraine's gratitude. Of all the operational security failures, likely none takes the cake quite like the now infamous New Year's Eve strike, which might have killed as many as hundreds of brand new Russian conscripts. At a minute after midnight on New Year's Eve, Ukraine delivered a terrifying strike on Russian troops. Utilizing several HIMARS rockets, Ukraine leveled the Professional Technical School No. 19 in Makivka inside of the separatist enclave of Donetsk. The attack was carried out thanks to the use of cell phones by the Russian troops 
who were calling loved ones or exchanging text messages. Rather than heart or grinning emojis, Ukraine responded with HIMARS rockets to the face. The strike was deadly, with Ukraine claiming hundreds had died, Russian officials reported only around 60 had been killed, later revising that figure to just over 80. However, a significant number of pro-Russian bloggers with sources amongst the Russian military all gave figures closer to Ukraine's claim than the official Russian one. The strike was devastating, but it was helped along by the fact that Russia's military leaders are a bunch of doorstops. Some genius comrade colonel had decided the best place to store ammunition, including artillery shells, was in the same place housing a large concentration of troops. The initial strike would have caused large damage to the building, but the resulting secondary explosion sealed the fate of what's likely hundreds of Russians who got to live for exactly one minute into 2023, all freshly arrived to Ukraine. Adding to the tragedy is the fact that such a large concentration of troops and range of precision artillery should never have happened, especially not on top of an ammo dump. But then again, this hasn't been a video about why Russia's military leaders are the brightest on Earth. Now go watch how Ukraine prevented a Russian day one win, or click this other video instead.